Hi, everybody. I guess if you have been like me and probably hundreds of millions of people around the planet today, you watched the funeral of Prince Philip in St. George's Chapel at Windsor uh, this afternoon. And there's quite a few things that I'd like to talk about as regards that. I guess in the first thing, I wanted to talk about this image that was put out by Her Majesty last night from her, pri from her private uh, you know, collection. And it's herself and Prince Philip taken uh, some years ago. And I thought it was really touching. They just look like any happy elderly couple. Uh, look at the smile on both of, both of their faces. Taken up in Scotland, I understand. It was a lovely photograph. And what it demonstrates, demonstrated to me is the, um, the, the togetherness that this couple patently had. They were together for over 70 years, for goodness sake. So this was a wonderful image, a really touching image. And perhaps, you know, perhaps it shows uh, a, a, an aspect to the to Majesty of the Queen in terms of how she must be feeling at the moment and her own emotions. We can't, we're only speculating on what they must be. But having to, having lost her husband of all those many, many years, um, you can you can imagine they must be pretty raw. So this was a lovely um, photograph. So that, that was the first thing I wanted to say. I really, really liked that. The second thing I wanted to say was that the actual service itself was carried out with the quiet dignity and protocol and um, a, 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 a wonderful uh, sense of pageantry because after all, you know, in, in St. George's Chapel there, which is, a, you, should, you should go there if you get the chance, um, it, it really represents in so many, so many ways the best of British. So, it, but that chapel, um, it's a really big chapel. I wanted to then cut away to this because there's, there's a couple of points I want to make. First of all, let me just play this short clip from the service. And you could see, I mean, St. George's Chapel can hold 700 people. Today, this afternoon, there were 30 people in it, conforming to COVID regulations put in place by Boris Johnson. And for me, the saddest side of the day is the one I'm going to show you now. And here it is. This was the Queen um, sitting on her own. Um, just uh, just across from the uh, the coffin of uh, of Prince Philip, and there's I have very mixed emotions about this. On the one hand, the complete sympathy for Her Majesty and for anyone who's been you know to a, a funeral of a, of a very close loved one or partner knows how, how heartbreaking it is. So at that level, my heart goes out to her. At another level, I feel intense anger and fury at a government that insists on people like Her Majesty at this funeral having to wear a mask in a massive in a massive chapel, by the way, huge air circulation inside uh, St. George's Chapel. People say, oh yeah, but this shows that the royal family are really in touch with the rest of the people because after all, it wouldn't be fair that they did something different to anyone else. Agreed, but it's wrong for anybody commoner or royal to have to be given such restrictions at, at a funeral of all things. I find it abhorrent. I really, really do. And it doesn't matter to me that, um, you know, that the, um, the Queen has conformed, if you like, to government regulations. The regulations are wrong, absolutely wrong. And in this case, 100% wrong. I thought it was absolutely vile to make the Queen do this. But of course, they all do. Uh, they they all did. Um, uh, you know, uh, 
conform. And so Prince Charles, and you've seen that, I'm sure you saw all the imagery, everyone wore their masks inside this massive cavernous chapel for COVID regulations. Yeah. Uh, then I wanted to show you another uh, act of remembrance, uh, but elsewhere, not, not, not Windsor, this time in Sheffield. So I want you now to watch this. We, as in all those who are here today, we are here, we are here today. And our coming here today is a symbol of that unity that exists in humanity. We are a force of unity and we stand up against all the forces of this unity. Uh, nice touch with the rainbow balloon, by the way. Well, I don't know about you, but whilst there may have been 30 people inside St. George's Chapel, there was a lot more than 30 people standing there. I reckon at least uh, well in excess of 100. How can that be? How can it be in one part of the UK for one particular group, as many as possible can rock up and the police aren't there, there's no enforcement, there's no nothing. Meanwhile, at the very heart of the British establishment in Windsor, in St George's Chapel, it's rigorous enforcement. Now, I understand that the royal family uh, have gone along with what they have to go along with, and I have full respect for them. I think everyone, by the way, from the royal family did really well today, Harry included. It was all done with the dignity that makes our royal family so impressive. But when I contrast with that scenes from Sheffield, I see a massive double standard. So in summary, I guess my position is this. It's wrong to have COVID regulations when it comes to funerals enforced in the way that we saw at Windsor Castle today. And that's absolutely wrong. And it's equally wrong to have double standards where certain groups get away with all kinds of stuff and others cannot. So I leave, I leave you with your memories of the, of the afternoon. Do let me know what you thought of the, uh, the, the funeral service and, 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 and your, 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 you know, your reflections on the day. And uh, I'll catch up with you folks real soon.